Well, it's time to stop making videos with titles like what will happen in 2020 because 2020 is officially here. Happy New Year's, everybody. Let's get this year rolling by talking about PC hardware as usual. And unsurprisingly, the first video will indeed be mostly about AMD because this is really their year. A year that was preceded with non-stop rumors while I was trying to take a Christmas vacation. First, there was the hoopla regarding AMD possibly going to Samsung to fab some of their 5500 XTs, which of course turned out to not be true. And then there was also the Zen 3 IPC rumor, which is still rolling full steam ahead here. And all I can say about this early is... Well, I don't know. I've always thought it would be around 10% or more, and I could have seen up to 20% considering the massive changes they're making, but we'll have to see. It could be much less than this, and maybe 17% is just with specific like server apps or something. I don't know, but I will say one more time, don't doubt it. AMD is literally bragging in slide after slide how they want to be above 7 to 8% IPC increases. So why you would doubt 17% could happen again when they're completely changing the CCX system is a little questionable logic to me. But nonetheless, now what everybody is talking about is the RX 5600 XT and of course, Big Navi. The rumors about Big Navi will never stop. And it's, of course, because people are desperate for AMD to challenge NVIDIA for the top crown again. They've done it multiple times in the past, taken top performance. The rumors pretty much line up with everything I've reported. They look like they could beat the 2080 Ti. I mean, if it's really 500 millimeters squared, 80 compute units, a dual HPM GDR6 memory controller. Again, all things I've talked about. Go listen to old Broken Silicons and watch my old Big Navi videos. I'm going to stop speculating. It's time for AMD to put up or shut up in 20. 20. There's been all of these roadmaps, all of these cards we've been waiting for AMD to play. Well, we're at a new decade. Play the cards, AMD. And now let's talk about why, if these cards are played, they could be death blows. And the first card I want to talk about is, of course, a graphics card. Big Navi. And for that matter, an entire top-to-bottom new RX 5000 series lineup. AMD actually started taking graphics market share back in early 2019 because of how reasonably insanely priced their Polaris cards were relative to deterring. But they've had good price performance before. No, it was mostly the mind share. The fact that all anyone could talk about before it even came out was Zen 2. And that hasn't receded at all. If anything, it's increased even more. Ask anyone who's in the know, and they just pretty much resolutely say now, AMD is in charge of the CPU market, at least when it comes to people who know what they're buying. I mean, just anecdotally today when I was on WCCF, I saw a poll for what people are most excited for. And I got to say, every month, it feels like these polls are more and more balanced towards people just saying they're hyped for AMD products. There is a real appetite for more AMD stuff right now. And while you might argue some websites have always had an AMD fanboy slant at least in terms of people who viewed the website i've never seen numbers this high right the 3950x shut everyone up it may not have clocked to five gigahertz but it actually used less energy than their 12 core well providing double the cores of its closest competitor the eight core 9900 ks and you might argue that uh Cascade Lake X is the direct competitor to the 3950X that comes on a more expensive platform without, it's just with double the power usage. It really just doesn't matter how you bend it at this point. If you're trying to compare an HEDT processor from Intel to the 3950X, that already looks terrible. And it's because the 3950X isn't the top. The Red Ripper is out and it doesn't game bad for the first time ever a top HEDT platform games as well as its lower priced more mainstream platform you have the mindshare nvidia's gambit for ray tracing mindshare seems to have mostly failed at least it wasn't as much of a success as i thought it might be from a marketing point of view and the biggest problem really for nvidia when you think about it is just this they can pay off reviewers as much as they want. They can double their marketing 
um, for their new graphics cards, and they can tell people to always make sure they mention ray tracing in reviews that aren't even about NVIDIA graphics cards. But what they can't do is crush the mindshares AMD CPUs have right now. And in fact, they depend on AMD CPU platforms to put their graphics cards into. This is a real dilemma. You know, all of these... All these jokes people make about NVIDIA's marketing and how they'll just brainwash people. The, the, the Zen's supremacy is kind of the ultimate foil because if people search for AMD products more because AMD has the top CPUs, you know, AMD has thought of a CPU company first. And so people look for more AMD products in general when their CPUs are selling well, just like as... Intel CPU mindshare falls, people will probably not buy as many Intel SSDs. It's just how it is. Whatever your flagship product is, and for AMD it is a CPU, it sells the rest of their products. And we're no longer in a situation where people think of AMD as an overall bad company and where NVIDIA can just basically spam marketing against Radeon. And then you sit there and you go... Why is there no top AMD GPU? The Radeon 7s for creators, the 5700 XT is, you know, great deal compared to Turing, but a, really a $350 upper mid-range card. That's it. NVIDIA has declared they will make at least most of their next-gen graphics cards at TSMC, but we haven't seen any real leaks yet that... They're around the corner, right? Where's the big leaks about next-gen Ampere or whatever they end up calling it? There aren't any. So they are at least probably six, eight months out. Now's the time to go big or go home. And frankly, if AMD doesn't take the performance crown this year, and again, I'm not saying they necessarily will, but if they don't when they have all of this stacked in their favor then I don't know if they'll ever care to do it for years to come because I don't know why they wouldn't do it now. It just doesn't make sense. And let's be very clear about this too. I know there's people who will say, well, TSMC capacity, blah, 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 blah. But you got to understand, taking the crown isn't what most of the cards you're selling are. Most of the cards they sell will still be 5,700 XTs through 2020. So why not just make 10,000 5,900 XTs and just only make as much as economically makes sense, make them at a somewhat reasonable price, and if they sell out and they're hard to get, cool. They'll just generate even more hype for how in-demand AMD's products are. But they need to get something out there, and they need to prove they can do it. And I don't doubt them. I think they can. I think they could go with some insane you know, compute unit monster that's fi over 50% bigger than the existing Navi cards and just really crush it. And I guess one thing I'd add to that too is don't assume it's going to use 400 watts. Let's say it goes all the way up to, I don't know, any amount of compute units, right? Let's just say it goes up to 56 compute units or something, even though I think it could go higher, uh, especially because of that die size. If it goes to 56 compute units, let's say with GDR6, right, that version would use 350 watts or something or even 400. Well, that version, they'll just use the HBM controller and cut out 50 watts right there, make it maybe a 300, 320 watt card. Then they cut it down to maybe 48 compute units and use GDR6 and it stays like a 300 watt card. These are things they can do, you know? So just keep in mind, if they're using two memory controllers, that's why they're doing it, so that they don't have a 400 watt card. Now that's big Navi, but what about a smaller one? The RX 5600 X. T. And I actually want to use the 5600 XT to talk about something, and that's Radeon's pricing strategy in 2020. Where should we expect all of these cards to be priced at? And what do I think about the rumors that the 5600 XT is likely to cost 280 to 300? Well, first of all, let me say this. I am sick and tired of the pricing double standard that I see all over forums. I saw this on Tech Power Up today, and let's just see what this guy says. I won't be optimistic to that degree. It should be, I, it should either be faster or cheaper. Lisa Sue's GPU price policy is not good and isn't working. And then this guy below him goes, I have to admit the GPU costs are a tad on the high side in relation to the competition, though I also find NVIDIA's GPUs overpriced. 
But I agree, AMD needs to rethink its overall GPU pricing. Why is it always AMD that needs to rethink their pricing strategy? Why does the RX 5500 XT come out more expensive than what I would have wanted it priced at, but still 8 gigabytes and very close to a 1660 Super for less money than a 1660 Super. So let me answer this 5600 XT question. Why is the 5600 XT that based on this leaked benchmark versus the RTX 2060 notebook? Now keep in mind this is a notebook version of the 5600. And let's see where the performance is at. It's right there next to the 2060. So when people ask, why is this going to cost $300, it's because the 2060 costs $350. That is why the same performance costs up to 20% less. This idea of, you know, a $200 2070 killer like we wanted, or some 5 gigahertz 16 core at $500, this is just not happening. AMD will make sure though, I believe, that their price performance relative to their competition stays an advantage. They're just going to keep that. So the people that think they're going to start jacking up prices, I don't think they're going to do that yet. But I don't think we're going to see this thing of half the price half the price for the same level of performance anymore. And just a reminder for where I'm coming from this year. This is the first big video of the year. I don't want higher prices for any of these products and i don't want any product to fail i want nvidia intel amd arm i mean anyone anyone who enters any of these spaces that touch me i want them all to do well and be priced as low as possible so when i talk about why amd are doing these things you know i'm only wearing an amd shirt because that's what i'm talking about i wear an amd shirt when i talk shit about them too and i wear you know an intel shirt when i'm talking shit about intel i'm not rooting for well i'm really rooting for all of them but i'm not rooting for any of them to make more money necessarily I'm just trying to explain what's happening because I think we can all sit here and just scream at the sky as much as we want, but I think it's more interesting to discuss why things are happening the way they are instead of freaking out. Now, speaking of freaking out, let's quickly talk about what the hell's going on with Intel versus AMD. And yeah, I do think Intel should be freaking out at the prospects of Zen three right now i do not believe comet lake will be good enough competition to claw back market share maybe maintain some and and to be clear i do think comet lake will be a 30 percent better gen i think they will be more efficient they will bring higher thread counts it will be better than the previous gen but amd just doubled performance they didn't increase it by 30 percent and zen 3 should again increase performance i believe by at least 10 percent while reducing power usage again and before zen 3 even comes out comet lake which i've already talked about before in my whispers of golden cove video that some of the lineup has at least been delayed due to power delivery issues when it comes out by quarter two it will be competing with probably 400 dollars 12 cores that use 65 watts which whatever intel calls their tdp this will be using about half of the power that intel's competitors will be using and have two more cores than the 10 core that will probably cost more and trust me the 3800x is already going for 330 at micro centers here amd is probably ready to drop the 3800x to about 320 and then the 2700 i mean the 3700x to about 270 which will place it right up against the 12 thread i5 while amd has 16 threads and better efficiency and it's no surprise that tsmc has just made amd their number one manufacturer replacing apple they're making a lot of money off of these 70 millimeter squared chiplets that are going into zen 2 and their capacity is just increasing so well again i don't really think amd has that much of a capacity problem at tsmc I see it more as an allocation problem and a nice problem to have. But if AMD really wants to be successful, they need to move past 7 nanometer to a certain degree. And I think they are. I mean, right now, actually, you can get a 2700 for $135 in 8-core for 100 for i3 prices against 4-thread i3s. That's insane. And right now, we already know they're moving their current 
Gen 1 Zens, they're basically, what they're doing is they're just manufacturing Zen Plus CPUs that only have to meet the clock speeds of the previous gen and calling it an R5-1600. So this, they say this actually boosts all-core turbo a bit higher than the 14 nanometer versions, and they're preparing to just start selling 12 thread, 12 nanometer CPUs for 70 bucks. And this should alleviate the problem that AMD has had, something Adore TV actually touched on over the past couple of years. Either they can't touch the high end well enough, or when they did with Zen 2, they couldn't manufacture enough of the dirt cheap chips to really kick a dent into the dirt cheap to manufacture Pentiums Intel's making. Well, now they can. They can just allocate, you know, 12 nanometer R5 1600s for 70 bucks, and eventually, I hope, $100 2700Xs to compete against the four thread, four core, eight thread i3s. So everyone's saying, whoa, a five gigahertz, one, you know, $40 uh, eight thread i3 coming up. Who cares when there's $100 2700X? I know which one I would get. And so AMD should finally be able to take real CPU market share, not just a bit in the high end with the prosumers and in the mid range with like the 2600 and then the 3600. Now they can finally have that Halo 3950X and actually have the capacity to pump out 12 nanometer 2700Xs and R5 1600s at below 100 bucks and just make there be basically no argument for not choosing AMD. I think this will probably be one of the darkest years for Intel if 2021 isn't worse. But that's just going to have to do it for me. My dogs are currently freaking out because people are here. I'm going out to dinner. And yeah, I know this video was just all over the place right now, but I had a lot of thoughts when it comes to what people expect from AMD and what's gonna happen. And you can expect videos like this about Nvidia and Intel coming soon, at least I suspect so. And just keep in mind, going throughout this whole year, try to keep in the back of your head, why are these companies doing the things they're doing? And then what can we do, right? Like if you want graphics cards to get cheaper, it's not about complaining about AMD's prices being close to NVIDIA's, it's about just not buying either. And I imagine there will be a lot to discuss when it comes to all of these companies. Because I, again, I really think this year might be even more crazy. So I hope you liked this video. Just getting my thoughts out there and what I think about AMD's prospects going into this year. I really think they have a chance to take crazy CPU market share with this two-pronged 7 nanometer, including APUs now, and 12 nanometer dirt cheap approach. And I think their GPUs should be NVIDIA. If they don't... I don't know what they're doing. Please like, subscribe, and share, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Got a super long broken silicon coming where me and Dan try to get through all of the stories that we missed in December. All right, thank you.